Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to open here number 12 of the 185 ordinary period of sessions of the Inter-American Court on Human Rights, which is entitled Situation of Human Rights of Indigenous Peoples in Brazil. It was requested by a group of civil society organizations that are with us today. My name is Julissa Mantisha Falcon. I'm rapporteur country reporter for Brazil and president of the Inter-American Commission. And today with me are Commissioner Esmeralda Erosemena de Truitinho and Commissioner Joel Hernandez. Also at this hearing, we have the Executive Secretary of the ICHR, Tara Renault, the Assistant Executive Secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido, and the Special Reporter for Economic, Social, Culture, and Environmental Rights, Sociedad de García Muñoz. I would like to greet the state civil society and Jan Jarab, that is representative of the UNOCHR. I would like to explain how time will be allocated. Civil society will have 20 minutes, then the state will have 20 minutes, then Mr. Jan Jarab will have seven minutes, then the American Commission will take the floor for 20 minutes, and then we will have a second set of rounds for of 12 minutes each. Having said this, I would like to ask you to respect time distribution. And now I would like to give the floor to civil society organizations for 20 minutes. Thank you. Olá, boa tarde, senhoras e senhores. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, state representatives and everyone here. My name is Mauricio Terena. I'm from an indigenous, I'm, I, I'm indigenous and I am a lawyer representative here, my, our, my organization. I am here with many organizations defending indigenous populations like Apib, Goyab, Univaja, Robert Kennedy, Human Rights and Greenpeace Brazil. These are the organizations that are defending human rights of indigenous populations in Brazil. I would like to thank the commission with the president, Yulisa Mantisha, for the opportunity of presenting our concerns with the situation of human rights of indigenous populations in Brazil. The situation has worsened in this election year with hate speech against our populations and also with fake news concerning indigenous populations. As a member of the indigenous community trying to fight for territorial rights, I can tell this commission that I have encountered situations of extreme violations of human rights in the past four years. I've had family members that have died due to COVID and also there was huge deforestation and also the free consultation instrument is not a real one, it's only on paper. In this situation, we would like to tell you what we have experienced in the past few months. In order to give you a better overview about the last facts, I would like to invite to the floor, Kari Wajajara, Ilias Imarubo, and Rodrigo Patajo. You have six minutes. Thank you. I would like to greet everyone here, and I would like to thank you for giving us this hearing. I am from an indigenous community, and I am also a lawyer member from the coordination of indigenous populations called Coyabi. I would like to start by telling you that the Brazilian Amazon has the largest number of isolated indigenous populations in the world. And this piece of information should call the attention of the Brazilian state in order to make all possible effort, efforts to protect our territories and also the human rights of these indigenous populations. However, what we have diagnosed from Koyabi is completely opposite, especially throughout the last years, we have dealt in the institutional sphere with 
the lack of demarcation of indigenous territories and also the very own omission by the state and all these issues together have made possible the criminal acts against indigenous populations and its territories. Tanaru, for example, survivor of a community that was subject to the violence of those who wanted to take his territory was found dead on August 23rd, 2022 in his land that was not correctly limited. And still, this is the extension of the territory. And also we have been having lots of issues in Brazil accompanied by the uncertainty of what will happen with our territories. The body dealing with indigenous issues in Brazil is allowing for illegal minors to come to our areas and women in our area are being contaminated with mercury that is going through their veins, but also through their breast milk. And this is truly the interruption of the physical reproduction of a community. There were several attempts to legalize illegal mining has fostered the acts of criminal groups. On October 2nd, illegal miners attacked a, an indigenous community. And after that, one of the leaders of the communities was killed and a teenager was seriously injured. Indigenous organizations already had already expressed how worried they were in this pre-election period during the elections and also after the elections in Brazil. And this, our concern was due to candidates and public authorities that were through their speeches fostering violence against some groups. Also in September, in a period of two weeks, Three members of a community in Maranhão were killed. Also, Antonio Cafetera Silva Guajajara and Israel Miranda Guajajara. But these are not isolated cases. No, our organizations have researched and data shown have shown that between 2003 and 2019, at least 57 indigenous community members were killed in Maranhão, but since there is no public body systematizing data on violence, most of these lives were silenced without punishing those who were responsible. And before these types of killings, we've been dealing in Brazil with public authorities that immediately after the crime, try to decontextualize the collective situation and this lack of consideration of all the struggle, fight and resistance and the context of these crimes that are completely intertwined favors for cases not to be investigated. And in most cases, this prevents from criminals to be duly trialed. And these violations are commonly reproduced, not only in our territories, but also in municipalities which are neighboring to these territories that have become the stage for terrible situations. Indigenous people are killed for different reasons, maybe because they are defending their rights as the stewards who are com constantly attacked. And also they are killed just for being members of the indigenous community. And our sensation, our feeling today in Brazil, considering our history of assassinations and also the recent history, is that in Brazil, there is an authorization by the very own state to kill indigenous members, community members, because they are not punishing those who are responsible. We've never been trying and we are not trying here to ask for your help in terms of monitoring. The thing is that criminals in Brazil, those acting inside the institutions and those who are directly tainting their hands with indigenous blood. They do not care about going against indigenous populations. They are directly acting and affecting 
this situation and they should be protecting lives. So it's urgent for the Brazilian authorities to respect national and national laws and regulations and to preserve the life of indigenous people. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Elias Marubo. I'm from Valley a very indigenous land from the extreme west of Amazonia, the heart of the Brazilian Amazonia. During the last months, the region of Valley Javari had international importance, talking about the violations that the indigenous peoples in our region have suffered. I cannot avoid to stress also what my colleague has just stressed, because this has been a recurrent practice from the Brazilian authorities, the lack of observation of the fundamental rights of the indigenous peoples. The Valle Javari is the region that most uh, considers the biodiversity in the South Con and in Brazil. It's a region that was abandoned by the Brazilian state. And this was said the whole world, how the free, uh, um, the free trade had violated this area. We cannot set aside the great violations of human rights of those who are by our side. It's well known the case of Bruno in Javali, who was cruelly murdered because of the absence and the omission of the Brazilian state. We should also mention the isolated indigenous peoples that for so long and now are also relegated by the state. They don't have any condition of uh, having their human and fundamental rights acknowledged. Ladies and gentlemen, the cost of the main human right is the um, a right to life. And our territory is being attacked by criminal uh, groups that act by uh, because of the omission and the absence of the Brazilian state. They pretend this problem not to exist. Our uh, people have uh, denounced all these violations that have been perpetrated against them. Unfortunately, the authorities did not acknowledge those violations and they pretend those problems not to exist. The body that should take care of these issues here in the Brazilian state denied very deeply these rights during the last uh, years. We have experienced a, a lack of service towards the indigenous peoples that could not uh, have their rights uh, warranted in their communities. There's also a lack of existence of human rights towards other indigenous peoples that voluntarily live isolated. There's no way for them to have access to these human rights and they have suffered massive murders, mass massive killings and many other crimes. They are murdered in order to eliminate them from their lands. It is well known in Brazil that there are violations of human and indigenous rights. This has been increasingly so in the last four years, these crimes against the indigenous people, specifically those that are isolated. This has been uh, extremely important. This is something that our people have heard. This is a dark time in our history because as my, as my colleague Java Bada Dizzy said, 
the last indigenous was killed and Brazil will need to think about itself and the greatest violations of human rights that were perpetrated along the last years. Thank you for your attention. The civil society organizations still have time to present. Are you going to continue presenting? We are waiting for Rodrigo Pacacho to arrive. Could you please allow us a few seconds, please? because we would really like him to participate. But he's experiencing some connectivity issues. Another possibility is to keep these five minutes for your second round. So you have time for him to get back. Do you think that's okay? Yes, Commissioner. That could be a good alternative. So please, I would like to ask the team to book those five minutes for the second round of the civil society. Now the state has 20 minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. and Mr. Com Commissioners. I am Joan Lucas Quental from the Department of Human Rights and Social Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I also integrate the delegation of Brazil, the Commission of the Indigenous People, Public Safety, the Ministry of Women, Health and Human Rights, Ministry of Health. I also reiterate that the delegation we have Ronaldo Parisi and Ms. Maria Gonzaga da Silva. They are representatives of indigenous people. I would like then to show the interest of the state in the participation of this hearing, that we see this as an opportunity and a space to promote dialogue and to establish measures by the state in favor of the human rights of the indigenous peoples. I give the floor to the FUNAI representatives. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Elizabeth Alcantara. I'm uh, the director of FUDAI. I would like to greet all of the people that are present in the hearing. We'll make a short introduction I would like to receive uh, the authorization to do so. Okay, th this is my presentation. I put you in context um, what FUNAI does. I introduced you to FUNAI work. It is present in the whole country with 39 sectional bodies, 140 um, organizations. Our mission is uh, working with 1 million indigenous people throughout the whole um, national territory with more than 200 languages currently. FUNAI understands that this policy uh, is based in three pillars, dignity, uh, peacekeeping, and uh, judiciary justice. We have seen uh, several advancements in order to increase autonomy and also to improve management that gave us a consequence more transparency. During the last four years, we accumulated several advancements, among which we can 
um, mentioned the reinforcement of the fiscalization of indigenous lands, among others, and also the fight against COVID-19. In terms of protection of indigenous lands, this was conducted by FUNAI during the last three years with 150% more than in the previous management. Our activities are vital for our community. FUNAI supports different uh, joint cooperations conducted together with environmental bodies. Since this is a restless uh, job that we have been conducted uh, during the last years, we have avoided the deforestation of several lands in the Amazonia. We also invest in actions towards the protection of isolated indigenous people, reaching 2.4 million in the last two years, a 36% increase compared to the previous government. FUNAI continuously monitors uh, the territory with 29 ethno-environmental bases. We should stress that FONAI tested more than 42 million to the regularization of the situation, which represents an increase compared to the previous uh, government. FONAI promotes uh, training. In other terms, we invested more than 120 million against uh, COVID-19. And we helped more than 90,000 indigenous families with different uh, initiatives such as warranting tons of uh, food for isolated communities. We also work with sanitary barriers. The investment of FUNAI reaches uh, 12 million reals. Our foundation also invested more than 40 million in three years, which represents an increase in 72% in order to promote independence and dignity of these communities and to improve their lives. Once again, we reiterate the importance of FUNAI's achievements during these last years. We need to strengthen our commitment and our actions that bring about effective and practical results. Only this way we'll have a dignity, uh, a dignous future and we'll be protagonists of our own history. Thank you very much. Uh, now I give the floor Please, uh, you could uh, stop sharing the presentation. I give the floor to Mrs. Maria Aureli, an indigenous uh, that works with FUNAI for more than 20 years now. I think that you had to stop sharing the screen. Is that right? And the state has some minutes left for its intervention. Hello. I would like to greet everyone from the commission. I am Maria Oleri. I'm from Brazil, a native Brazilian. I'm from an indigenous community. And I've been working at FUNAI for 20 years to deal with indigenous issues. And I would like to 
tell you about the work that the government has been doing from the perspective of an indigenous woman. So in my specific case, considering the importance of indigenous women in communities and the specific case, I work with indigenous women and FUNAI has supported us we were supporting women, indigenous women, to avoid discrimination, to strengthen their role, and to establish processes to help them through government bodies. In this regard, we at FUNAI work for actions proposed by FUNAI, for example, women against climate change in the Amazon biome. And this was a project that we did with the World Bank. And this project is about hiring consultants in order to have research and the experience of indigenous women, especially in order to know about their environmental protection, cultural fostering, and their social organization to deal with climate change and methodology for the execution of meetings in the Amazonic biome. And this was a program organized in three different biomes. We also had the exercise of the right to coexist with the family. And the name of our program was a child protected is a child in his or her community. So we work with the indigenous communities about the right to coexist in a family and in a community focusing on violence issues. Also, there was another project, the role of indigenous women and the fight against domestic violence. We hired consultants in order to conduct meetings and exchange so that women can share their experiences to fight violence against women. And the main guideline for this project was the role of women and also the respect to their ethnic and cultural specificities in each community. So we worked with three biomes and we're going to keep on working with three more biomes in 2023. So as we can see, FUNAI has been working throughout this time in order to help indigenous women by recognizing the force and the importance of indigenous women in their communities and recognizing that they are the foundations of their communities and that women are those that give place to knowledge, culture, and their native languages. And they reproduce their native language in their communities. We are working with the support of the Brazilian government and the president of FUNAI in order to change the reality of indigenous women and to offer them a good quality of life. Moreover, we are working, trying to get to know more about their crops and since their bioma the biomes have specific crops we are also helping them and supporting them with these projects returning to the typical crop collecting techniques now i will ask ronaldo to give a statement Ronaldo? Ronaldo, can you hear us? I'm afraid he's not here. So we can give the floor to the next speaker if he's not here. So now I will give the floor to the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety. Uh, 
Paulo Teixeira, you have the floor. I'm sorry, I was having some technical issues. First of all, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I represent the Federal Police. My name is Paulo Teixeira, and here I would like to tell you what we do about crimes against indigenous peoples. The Federal Police in Brazil has a sector, a specific sector to deal with crimes affecting the collective interest of indigenous peoples. And this is part of the structure of the main body of the federal police, and this is related to our human rights division. Our role is precisely to give orientation to the decentralized units of the federal police. We have units in every state in Brazil, more than one per state. And our role is to aid colleagues while investigating crimes against these communities. In parallel, there are several investigations and many of them with a prompt response in the case of homicides, for example. In those cases, we have operational planning and these are intervention police operations in indigenous territories and only in 2022 we already done 40 operation with the intervention of the police in several indigenous territories mainly in the area of the amazon forest in the area by anomami there is the intervention almost once a month by the police and in the area of Bacacha, in the state of Pará, I've been there and there are several indigenous populations there in which we've conducted our operations. Moreover, we know that we still have great challenges. We have logistical issues because the access to those areas is very hard. In practical terms, we can only get there by plane or helicopter. So that increases the cost of operations. And therefore we have some budgetary restrictions. Also, I would like to say that the federal police believes that the protection of indigenous communities and the fight against the crimes against these communities is a priority for us by the federal police and the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety. Thank you for your intervention. Now I will give the floor to the Ministry of Women, Family and Human Rights. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the way in which I am going to be greeting the indigenous peoples, this is in the language of one of the indigenous communities in the Amazon area where I worked for a long time. I'm Ezekiel Hockey, and I work in the Ministry of Women, Family and Human Rights. And I've been defending the rights of indigenous peoples since 1989. My secretariat is in charge of articulating public policies developed to favor indigenous communities. And we do this together with the Ministry of Justice and Public Safety and the National Foundation for Indigenous People. So this is the articulation of several bodies in the federal government, not only FUNA, in order to work with the defense of these communities. And I would like to quote now some actions that we have conducted as a ministry and secretariat in order to, to foster racial equality. In indigenous communities, we have a very delicate situation with what is happening with the young people in indigenous communities. This year, we started a project called Cuidar which is a project together with the Drug Prevention Secretariat and with a department from Mato Grosso do Sul 
that would like to deal with the situation of drugs in young indigenous people. Also, we created an action plan for vulnerable indigenous children and teenagers. And this is part of an integral program for the protection of children and teenagers created in this government by decree 11,074 from 2020. And the idea here is to deal with violence against children and teenagers from indigenous communities with the participation and consultation of several indigenous community members that helped us develop this program and are working with us. We are organizing a very important campaign called El Sol Brasileiro in order to create awareness about traditional communities, especially indigenous communities, and we explain how to report human rights violations. We still have a lot of information about indigenous populations and what we do, but let me tell you that we've been working in order to solve and mediate in conflicts related to traditional populations, indigenous populations, companies, and the state. We are open to dialogue and we are together to guarantee the human rights of indigenous communities of our Brazilian nation. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have 20 more seconds. Would you like to use them now? Can we talk now very quickly about the protection program or? You may do it now and we'll count it out of the uh, final time. It's the same for us. Commissioners, petitioners, state representatives, environmentalists. I would like to clarify first that we have 18 indigenous communities in our program. The program covers the entire national territory through written agreements that were signed with state governments. We have 11 state programs, Sierra Grande do Sul, Amazonas, Mato Grosso, Paraíba, Minas Gerais, Rio de Janeiro, Pará, Pernambuco, East, and Sierra. We also have the federal program covering all the other states that do not have their own program. In 2020, we started a pilot project with two regional teams, one of them in the city of Porto Velho and the other one in the city of Dorados, where we have a large number of indigenous people. And in the state of Mato Grosso, we have the second largest self-declared indigenous population in the country. So according to data from September 2021, our program accompanies 116 human rights defenders and 43 are self-declared indigenous. And in the rest of the states, we have 100 defenders self-declaring as indigenous. So there, let me tell you that through our program, we have updated our ordinance in order to have protection measures in order to help indigenous populations. And if they are going through a situation of financial difficulties, they will be received by the program. Also, this program has expanded its board of directors. So now we have three representatives from the civil society organizations, and one of them specializes in indigenous issues, guaranteeing then the perspective for the deliberation of the board of directors. Moreover, we're going to be having a national protection plan and this will be done by the Brazilian state and will bring along even more measures that will improve our current programs. Thank you very much. Um, please, let's uh, right, record the use of the state's time. Now I will give the floor to Mr. John Jarab, representative of the uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights from the UN. Dear President, dear Commissioners, representatives of the state of Brazil, 
and representatives of the civil society, representatives from the indigenous peoples in Brazil. Just for a matter of protocol, I would like to stress that my being I am here as a regional representative of the um, Office of the High Commissioner, and that I am here to present information in an informal manner without being under oath. Nothing in my comments should be understood as um, uh, renounced to the uh, privileges that are granted to me by the UN. The defense of human rights in of the indigenous peoples in Brazil has been a priority for our office. We have met with leaders from numerous indigenous peoples, and in the past few years, we can mention the Caratungas, Patachos, Acroa Camelos, Murdurucus, Guaranese and Guarajaras. And based on the reports that were received, our office has talked to representatives from the three branches of state, um, of the Brazilian state at all levels, sharing information and our concern through letters, meetings, and pronouncements, we have tried to spread the word, the voice of those who come to us. Our office has also expressed our, it, our concern for the bills that may increase the violations of the human rights of indigenous peoples. For example, those uh, that go around the exploitation of natural resources and on the thesis of the temporary framework. Indigenous peoples fight, are facing the consequences of the historic colonization and the heavy inheritance of policies based on cultural assimilation, as well as the current expansion of agriculture and mining, illegal mining and mega projects for infrastructure. Within the context of COVID-19, they have also faced hurdles in their access to, just, uh, to health and information. These peoples are disproportionately exposed to internal displacements because of environmental changes and climate change. Many representatives of indigenous peoples shared with our office their diagnosis that the uh, capabilities of uh, national organizations have been progressively reduced in the past few years. And as a consequence, indigenous peoples are often left without means. Since 2019, no uh, indigenous lands have been limited and their, this activity has been dropping since 2003. According to FUNAI's official information, Currently, 109 plots of land are being studied for this. And in the meantime, over almost 600 plots are being claimed, but no proceedings have been um, started to validate that. The escalate in the invasion of lands, in particular those that are being limited, uh, will have an even more of an impact on the recognition of the rights of indigenous peoples to their national lands. According to CIMI data from between uh, 2016 to 2021, invasions in indigenous lands rose from 59 to 305 cases per year. This year, I had an opportunity to visit the Yanomami people for the celebration of the anniversary of the um, marking of their territory. And I got to uh, hear their testimony about illegal mining practices and the destruction of the environment because of, the, of this exploitation, which is dramatic for their community. Rivers are contaminated with um, mercury and that leads to effective food insecurity. There's more malaria. And as a consequence of floods, 
women and girls are disproportionately affected by disease and sexual violence. Illegal mining also affects the Munduruku and Para indigenous peoples. We know that the commission has issued precaution, granted precautionary measures for both peoples. Nevertheless, we believe that the answer, the response of the authorities has been insufficient while more violations are still being reported. Environmental defenders of these people have been fighting these invasions, deforestation, and the actions of uh, loggers in their lands. They have been protecting the preservation areas and have been doing acts that should be the responsibility of public authorities, and they have been prosecuted for that. The Karipuna indigenous people reported similar issues in the Rondonia state. Their population continues to wither and they face the attacks of uh, farmers and fishers and other investors since almost seven years. Indigenous peoples, because of the slowness of all the entire process, have been trying to take back their ancestral territories. The process for the Patashol land has been paralyzed since 2015, and these peoples are usually attacked. Recently, a 14-year-old child died because of this. They are attacked by militias, gunmen, and they even attack schools at night, according to the information we received. Our office would like to express its concern on the growing number of murders, threats, and other attacks on indigenous peoples and other human rights defenders, and also defenders of the land and the environment. Actually, in some cases, state agents might be directly involved in these attacks in 2022, um, the forced eviction of uh, Guaranias peoples in Mato Grosso do Sul left three dead and many people injured between June and September, and the conflict in the area still goes on. Finally, I would like to point out that women and girls face multiple forms of discrimination. They have low levels of participation in public and political life. They have higher poverty indexes and suffer all kinds of violence, including feminicide. The rise in gender-based violence against them with uh, special cases in Mato Grosso do Sul, for example, and also attacks against women defenders, they are all closely linked to uh, the disputes for land and natural resources, the activity of illegal economies and organized crime. Finally, we believe it is necessary to recognize indigenous peoples and their relation and their rights related to their lands and uh, their traditions. They are human rights defenders, they are environmental defenders, our office repeats its uh, commitment to cooperate with the Brazilian authorities, with indigenous peoples, and with the civil society to ensure the effective protection of their rights. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Now the commission will start speaking. First of all, I would like to ask the rapporteur for indigenous peoples, Ms. Uh, Arosemena, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Once again, I would like to greet the representatives of the state of Brazil, the representatives of the civil society organizations, the indigenous peoples organizations, and as a special rapporteur for indigenous peoples, I would like to point out, first of all, the importance of the acknowledgement of rights of uh, indigenous peoples and this historic fight against discrimination, against exclusion. Because as we heard from the representatives, I think Carrie 
and a colleague, Elisio, I think, I found it interesting that they point out that the issue of the right to prior consultation is something that appears in paper only, that is not complied with in reality. There's no consultation here. And also, the organizations talked about the investigations of the acts of violence, even the murders of indigenous persons. And they also state that in these actions, there's an acquiescence of the authorities themselves because they just stand by or even deny the facts. Because of those positions, I would like to ask the state in particular and Punai, when you're talking about the uh, peace building axis of the conflict, if we do have information stating uh, Dan Jarab was just giving us the information that the marking of the lands has not been taking place. The elements of that axis of the peacemaking effort, if we see that the markings appear on the regulations and there's a procedure for those to take place, how do you assess the peacemaking effort when we know that these markings ensure indigenous peoples the ownership of their land. So that's what the commission has been working on on their on its thematic reports. Today, we are promoting the right to acknowledge the collective rights of indigenous peoples, the free, the right to free determination. So I would like to ask the, the representatives of indigenous groups to tell us how, what you think about the processes for the uh, compliance with this right. And I would like to ask the state about the actual uh, markings and the, the actual peace making effort. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to begin by thanking the organizations present today for having requested this meeting. And I also would like to highlight the importance and the role of several agencies in the state of Brazil who have presented the different programs that are conducting to protect indigenous peoples. And I think this is a very relevant issue. There is a regional and global concern regarding the situation of indigenous peoples in Brazil because many of these peoples uh, protect the land of the world, that is the Amazon jungle. And um, many groups are really concerned about the different station of the Amazon. Uh, some time ago, I read in the press about the disappearance of a group that was voluntarily isolated. And the last man of this community died of natural causes. And this is one of the threats that we are recording today. 
I'd like to thank the representative of the Program of Protection of Human Rights Defenders in Brazil. I think that he being here is very relevant because one of the things that the petitioning organizations have highlighted are the risks faced by human rights defenders. And I think that therefore it's important to highlight how important the precautionary measures granted by the commission are out of 18 precautionary measures that are still effective in Brazil, five are aimed at protecting indigenous peoples. And we need to recall that those measures um, related to Orokorukus and Yanomamis peoples have also the protection of the Inter-American Court by the recent granting of provisional measures. I have a question for the state. On the one hand, I would like to know which measures of protection the protection program has for indigenous peoples. We have heard that these communities are being protected, but I would like to know what these measures are about, especially when there is a report that an indigenous indigenous people is at risk or their lives are, are at risk because some of these precautionary measures are granted because there are threats affecting the leaders of these indigenous communities for example Precautionary measure 744-17 was granted because of the inherent risks suffered by indigenous peoples. So we would like to know how the protection of indigenous leaders under threat is guaranteed. And on the other hand, the second question that I have for the state has to do with the measures that are being taken to, gotta, to ratify the Escazú Agreement. We celebrate that Brazil has signed this agreement. I know that uh, the Escazú Agreement is the result of the Rio Plus 20 Summit. And we would like to know the steps that you're taking for this agreement to be ratified because the agreement includes obligations that guarantee the right to defend human rights related to the environment. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. I have also some questions, but I know that the time of the hearing will not be enough uh, for you to answer all the questions, but we will be waiting for the information in writing. John Jarab mentioned or talked about this time frame and the risk that exist for the recognition of the lands of indigenous peoples. So I would like to know the response of the state against the arguments given in relation to this time frame. And there is also this group of bills that could have an effect on land demarcation. I would like to know what the response of the state is. And in particular, in particular as it was mentioned by Jan Jorab and by Commissioner Hernandez, the provisional measures granted by the court upon the request of the commission, uh, the sexual violence against women and girls was one of the main topics. The commission also pronounced about the uh, cases of sexual violence against four women, including a girl. I would like to know which specific policy exists to prevent, investigate, and sanction sexual violence acts against indigenous women and women and girls. And I would like to know if you have an intercultural policy for this. And I would like to add a footnote. Some time ago, I participated in an online event 
uh, with participants of the Brazilian Congress because it was about the Belém do Pará Convention. And several authorities talked about the fact that it's very difficult to investigate cases of sexual violence uh, against indigenous women because these women don't want to talk. And it is true, but this doesn't mean that the state cannot design policies that have, have an intercultural approach. So that's why I'm asking about those measures. I would like to know if Soledad Garcia Muñoz has any questions. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to greet the commission, the representatives of the state of Brazil and civil society organizations. The special rapporteurship is following up on the situation and is really concerned about the situation of indigenous peoples and tribal Afro-descendant and peasant communities in rural, uh, rural areas. And I believe that this is a great opportunity to focus on the situation of environmental rights of indigenous peoples in Brazil in relation to climate change. So I'd like to know both civil society organizations on the state and that they can tell me if there are any specific concern. And because I know that the state talked about a specific program that involves indigenous women and the special rapporteur is having some connectivity issues. I think dear Soledad, she's having an activity issues. I'd like to know if there is any comment regarding the role of businesses and business activities regarding the issue of the current hearing. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. So now we will begin with the second round of interventions. Um, the civil society can go first with the extra time that they were allotted. Assim que Rodrigo Patachó conseguiu adentrar na reunião, eu gostaria de passar a palavra para ele. Chief Tan Rodrigo Patachó could join us in this meeting. I would like to give the floor to him. Rodrigo. Hello. Good night, everyone. Good night. You can proceed. Okay. I'm Rodrigo Patachó, chieftain in Catay. We are experiencing connectivity issues, which don't allow us to understand what he's saying. We have been fighting for our rights. We have been being murdered for so long. We are here at this moment in our own territory. We are being affected by mining, by the destruction of our lands, by the free trade. by the first station. Our territory has been destroyed. So today we need to be here in order to struggle in favor of the indigenous peoples in Brazil. I'm sorry, we are experiencing connectivity issues. We would like to denounce a corrupt system of the white men. 
who work in administrative affairs. We are currently experiencing a problem with Patasho, health problems. We have several areas without medical attention. We don't receive we don't receive healthcare services. We never received professional teachers. We have always lived as the underprivileged in terms of health education. You see that we filed 156 requests. da monocultura, empresário do eucalipto, empresários do turismo, do agronegócio que está destruindo o território. We work uh, we see that there are companies from the touristic industry and agribusiness that are destroying our lands. We should have producers that should leave the territory, but that does not happen. So this is filed at the uh, Ministry of Justice. They are so bureaucratic, so slow, and this time frame crime that never resolves, this has to be solved in terms of the discussion of the indigenous lands. The time frame has to leave the this discussion of the indigenous lands in Brazil. This is being destroyed because of the gains and there should not be further delay in the land demarcation because our territory has been destroyed. The Patasho uh, people, the Mata Atlantica uh, people, these rivers are our blood, our spirit and everything is, is being uh, delayed. And this richness where the Portuguese men arrived and saw a paradise is full of uh, flora and fauna and hydric richness and all our knowledge. This is being attacked. We can no longer accept this. I could collect data from health, education areas and and more. But I felt that the best that I have today, the best I can do is to show you our reality. I'm threatened uh, to life. As a chieftain, I cannot stand this situation anymore. We need the, the limitation of our territory. We cannot accept the invasion of our territory killing our youngsters, drug. Organization, uh, well, we still face um, connectivity issues. We cannot get his message. The indigenous system needs to be respected. They have a way of being and we need to have quality of life, medicine, hydric production, and that's not wrong. We need to be respected. We are fighting for our rights. Some 
Funai does not reach our territory. We cannot understand because of the connectivity problems. We are sorry. Funai has to come to our area and know our land. I'm sorry. Uh, if you have any questions, please go on. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, we were con uh, we were aware that we could add up the initial five minutes to this part of the hearing. Yes, of course. You can use all five minutes. Thank you very much. So I'll start the final considerations. We would like to reiterate our our commitment with the International Commission of Human Rights. And this commission has jurisdiction in over this debate. Brazil, when voluntarily entered this important international mechanism for the promotion of human rights, was responsible to contributing with a policy that protects, promotes, and ensures warranties uh, human rights. And this is a, a duty of the state. Brazil has institutionality and uh, has the burden of the colonization in their history that colonized the indigenous peoples through the necropolicy in terms of the term coined by the philosopher Alish Combe, they took by the force our lands in order to obtain their own financial interests, as happens today with the agribusiness. I am, um, I am obliged to mention this. We are in this uh, hearing trying to solve problems that have to do with this policy, the land delimitation and the protection of indigenous lands is a right that this jurisdiction acknowledged several times. The right to land of the indigenous peoples and their territories and the duty of protection. But in the last years in Brazil, there were no indigenous lands delimitations. On the contrary, there was a destructuring of the policy in Brazil. FUNAI worked with military men in order to eliminate this. Um, and Augusto Javier, the president, started to work in administrative tasks that put the indigenous peoples in uh, vulnerable situations. The uh, norm 909, which concedes uh, proprietaries uh, the declaration of their uh, property within the limits of the um, indigenous lands. This norm has a jurisdiction in more than eight states, but no land was delimited. They did not protect the, the rights of the owners. They uh, allowed for this to exist. They defended the time frame uh, thesis. For now, uh, did not work towards the public uh, defense uh, of these communities. During the pandemic, indigenous populations through their own organizations went to the Supreme Court in Brazil. Through GPF 709, we requested the judicial power to do something related to our situation with COVID-19. Through this advocacy, the federal government was obliged to give us budget and also to hire people to help us with the health situation. So the government was 
telling you that they were investing a lot of money in indigenous peoples, but this was not because they wanted to do so, but because they were ordered to do so. And on May 16, 2021, Luis Barroso determined so. And also, apart from this anti-indigenous peoples agenda promoted by the state, there's also been laws that were affecting us in the National Congress, several bills that do not include the due participation of indigenous peoples in the public debate. And some of these can even end up with the extermination of traditional communities and indigenous populations. Those bills are related to the so-called bancada ruralista, which uses this sector, this political sector uses their power to try and exterminate indigenous peoples and affecting the environment. And let me tell you about Bill 191 and 490. And um, these processes that are not open for the due participation of the civil society generates a feeling of lack of safety in indigenous communities. And this makes field owners and farmers to feel allowed to create their own militia groups to attack and to invade indigenous territories threaten leaders, men and women, and also killing people like happened in Mapoi in Mato Grosso do Sul. And since we have some more time, I would like to give the floor to the family of Eliezer Curry. The government is reducing our participation and the most important Brazilian organizations for indigenous are here, but we are not presenting false data and we have the deaths that were proved and they were due to the omission of the Brazilian state. And also the lack of investment in our people. Brazil has not had any investment whatsoever in public policies to help indigenous communities. We went to the Brazilian justice to force FUNAI to bring along financial resources, but we have, had, we have not had any responses. And we wanted at least for our territories to be protected and without doing so, FUNAI has not done so. And the death of Bruno is the responsibility of FUNAI and the Brazilian government. And we need to remind you that judicial authorities in Brazil have not told that so far who killed Bruno and Maxwell Pereira. They have not told us how they were killed. Another important situation to mention is that standards and laws in Brazil allow the executive power to carry out the demarcation of the indigenous territories in a certain time frame. And FUNAI should take care of this public policy and help indigenous peoples protect their rights. But the truth is that they are not doing so. And they are denying the rights of indigenous populations. And the government expresses through its representatives here all the things that they have done. But the truth is that this is not true. And more and more, we indigenous populations are in a limbo because, as I said, we are on the right side of history and we are going to show these two history, especially we're going to seek justice in spaces like this one where we have the opportunity to express our point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you for your participation. Now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state for their second intervention. I'm sorry, his audio quality is very poor. Uh, 
I am going to give the floor to the representative of the Ministry of Health to offer information related to the indigenous peoples. Hi, I'm Media. I am the director of the Department of Primary Healthcare to Indigenous Peoples, representing the Ministry of Health. In Brazil, we have a health system and we help also and serve and provide services to indigenous peoples. We have a special secretariat of indigenous health that belongs to the ministry and is responsible for the health of indigenous peoples. And we work together with different departments to take care of the different indigenous which are in several different areas of the country, which 34 special districts. We have more than 14,000 healthcare professionals. In 2022, we conducted more or we attended more than 9,000 people. And 88% of the Brazilian indigenous peoples were served. We have multidisciplinary teams for indigenous health that go through the different indigenous lands in the national territory. And they develop the primary health care for them. We have healthcare professionals from different areas. And also, we are in touch with indigenous agencies for health. And we try to make communication happen between healthcare workers and the indigenous communities. Also, we have the right policies in order to be able to provide the right healthcare. We are sorry, the audio quality is very poor. Resuming translation. We also take care of women and children, and we try to reduce child mortality. Also, we are going to have a program for access to drinking water for indigenous people in order to improve the health and the life quality of indigenous populations. And the goal is to have drinking water, universal access, and we are going to reach 95% of the population. And also we want to guarantee the system of daily supply. Moreover, we are going to be controlling the quality of the water and we're going to be having different actions related to training. Thank you very much. Thank you for your intervention. Now I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Ronaldo. I think you are muted, Mr. Ronaldo. Hi, can you hear me now? Please go ahead. Hello everyone. My name is Ronaldo. I'm an indigenous, le an indigenous leader. And um, we have 1.5 million hectares of demarcated land distributed among different indigenous communities. We have 3,000 people inhabiting this territory. And I would like to tell you here and to tell everyone who is here in this hearing is that it is very important to get to know the reality of several communities in Brazil, because sometimes what you see is that it looks that the Brazilian indigenous peoples are only going through suffering, but we during the 90s suffered too. But I believe that every year, indigenous peoples go through different 
living conditions. And with the arrival of technology, we've seen an interference of the social systems of indigenous communities. And I would like to bring along our experience here so that the world can see that when a community is organized and with objectivity, it can overcome any difficulty whatsoever. We started a project 20 years ago in order to work with mechanized tillage. And this is an activity from our region. And we adopted this knowledge and therefore we brought to our communities this in order to solve three types of problems that we used to have. Malnutrition indexes, that was at the time of Saudi indigenous programs. We were suffering from lots of people leaving our indigenous lands in order to find different financial resources outside our territories. And also our cultural issues and our culture was being forgotten. So we put this project in practice and today we have good results where we can make a social use for all of these for our population. And with these results, we were able to invest in education, technical education, technical uses, colleges. We invested in health issues and we complemented what was offered by society and during the pandemic, we used more than 70,000 reals from those resources in order to buy meds. So in the pandemic, we are 3,000 people and we had only eight people who died that had comorbidities. So another important fact is that the cultural issue was very important to us. We are also working with other programs for subsistence related to farming, small animals, fish, agriculture, and also the touristic activity that can bring income for our communities. And now we do not experience any problems with our neighbors. The farmers that surround our lands are our colleagues. And there are cities here who are suffering from prejudices. And I believe that the national policy should come to see us in order to see dignity and the continuity of the indigenous populations. And in order for them to be independent, they need to have the autonomy to choose their own future and their own format to develop their own lands. So this is what I wanted to bring for you. And let me tell you that we need to create public policies so that we can strengthen more and more our communities, our projects in order to survive in our territories. Also, I would like to say that it is very important the issue of the demarcation of lands for those populations that have been struggling for a long time and trying to reach ra the right regulations for the demarcation of the territory so that we can live in peace and in harmony and to be able to produce and give continuity to our peoples. This is what I wanted to mention today. And I am very happy for this hearing and I would like to thank you one more time. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. We are reaching the end of this hearing. The commission has listened very carefully to what has been presented during the hearing. I would like to thank the state for their participation today. This is something that the commission truly appreciates. I would like to thank the representative of the OACHR, Jan Jarab. We are always working together with the regional and universal system of human rights. 
And especially, I would like to thank the organizations for all the information that they have provided us with. I would like to express my solidarity and especially thank um, some of the members of indigenous peoples. I, we hope that the necessary protection measures are being taken. Um, together with this, I would like to say that the commission has been monitoring the situation of Brazil always. We have the press releases, we have the requests of precautionary measures that have become provisional measures granted by the court. And we know that you are going to send us information in writing. I would like to reiterate my question regarding the investigation of cases of sexual violence against indigenous women and girls and the intercultural measures taken by the state in these cases. I would like to receive this information from the state and from civil society. This information is highly relevant. And taking into consideration the work of the commission, I would like to uh, mention the report on the situation of human rights in Brazil of 2021. That is a chapter on historical and socio socioeconomic discrimination that includes a chapter on indigenous people. The commission and that report made a set of recommendations. And as we have said previously, we reiterate our offering to continue providing support and assistance to the state regarding the compliance of the recommendations. And we would like to reiterate our intention to conduct a visit to Brazil next year so that the commission uh, can work on the different dimensions of human rights in Brazil, not only indigenous peoples. Thank you again. It's very important for us to be able to listen to you. The commission supports you. I would like to adjourn the hearing. And before finishing, I would like to thank especially the interpreters who have supported us over the past few days. And having interpretation is something very useful for us. Have a nice afternoon. And I'm adjourning this hearing. Thank you. Thank you.